So I'm very, uh, very happy to have Anthony Marissa. We've got Matt Calhoun, Derek Hines and Natty Bandersack representing Fob Seng Club and CEO. Um, and let's let's hear a little bit more about them. Uh, guys, I'll just, it's a, I've got a few questions for you. So I'll just come to you each uh, with the question and the floor will be yours. So uh, I'm going to start... Uh, Let's start with, um, well, with Derek, I think. I think it would be apt. Um, all right, and uh, Derek, tell everyone, especially for the people who are um, at this event for the first time, for those who maybe don't know who, who you are, and just tell them who you are, your business, and something about you. Yeah, uh, Derek Hines. I'm uh, from Lafayette, Louisiana, so we're down here on the coast, and uh, I've been, we're hitting probably 18 months in, in 4%, and uh so uh, enjoying this process, always enjoy the, the coaching part. And, um, you know, we joined because of what I said earlier. Uh, I joined because it was at a point of, of either I'm going to run myself ragged or I've got to make some changes. So um, th that's that's been the evolution over the last 18 months. So cool. glad to be and, here. Uh, <laughs> we are very pleased to have you with us, Derek. Uh, Matt, same to you. Same question to you. Uh, yeah, Matt Calhoun. Um, I'm on the Atlantic coast in Canada, up in New Brunswick. Uh, I've been in 4% since coming as a, a guest member to the Nashville event. And I kind of came at it from the, from the other side of things. I was slow growing and wanted to really turn things around. So I joined after that event or during that event, kind of made up my mind. And yeah, been on the, the ride ever since, just um, slowly trying to take in some of Paul's teachings and the, and the, the other coaches. And it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a wild ride since then. <laughs> it has. Uh, Natty, let's go to you. Same question to you. Hey, guys. Natty Bandesack. Uh, I'm in East Hanover, New Jersey. I have a hybrid practice. Um, but I've been in 4% since 2019. Um, I actually joined because um, uh, a friend of mine, Tom Padilla, who used to be in another mastermind uh, with me left and I always admire the way he operates and the way he runs his business. So I reached out to him and asked him what he's doing. And he mentioned this group to me. I looked into it. I took um, business growth school, absolutely loved it. So I jumped right in into 4%, um, you know, since 2019 and just this, I'm on my second year now and, you know, there's no looking back. It's been one of the best decisions I've ever made so far. Fabulous. Thanks, Natty. Uh, Anthony, Marissa, over to you. Same question to you guys. Hey guys, um, I'm Marissa Roscoe. I'm Anthony. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best here. The voice is <laughs> coming back. I went to the urgent here yesterday and got a steroid pack just for today. So I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> Otherwise, you get to hear me talk. Um, so we are from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. Um, we started our practice in 2017. And for a hybrid practice also. Yep. And we joined Paul's group in the summer of 2018, I think it was yeah. after the Columbus Mastermind. So um, pretty much we had just started out the winter before that and kind of were exposed to Paul through different events and such. And um honestly felt like it was a really good fit it was for, a really good fit you know yeah. for our personalities and, and you know for his business acumen so um after that we joined ceo um this is our second year in ceo you know as well and that that's been um tremendous in helping us i think even more than business just personal growth um and getting the best out of ourselves from our business yeah. so that's excellent us. excellent I want to stay with you guys uh, as well so uh, tell us about um your experiences in the last last 12 months uh, through coaching? Sure. Um, so like Anthony said, um, we did join CEO. This will be our second year. And um, all I can really say is that I don't, I can't imagine where our business would be without, you know, the coaching that we've had through Paul and your team. Um, it's just been vital for us. It's obviously a very positive experience. We've been with him for a while now. Um, our business has grown tremendously as a result of that. And just all of the different, um, of course, areas of support from the progress groups to the events, to our CEO group. Um, I mean, there's been times where we've put in emergency calls to, to fall and he's, you know, like talk to, talk to us through different circumstances and just being new business owners, you know, three and a half years ago, um, 
you just can't anticipate any, anything that you're going to experience. So having the support of the group and the coaching really helps you tackle things so much faster. Um, when other people have gone through those experiences, you just feel more confident that it's going to turn out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think CEOs helped me to be a much better decision maker too, and make quicker decisions. Um, I mean, probably the most beneficial thing about CEO in my perspective is how emotionally level Paul is able to keep you. Um, that's, that's been a big growth point for me where I've really looked at situations a lot differently now. Um, and I've been much better control of my emotions for that process, you know? So I always think like the, the stuff that draws you to program sometimes is looking for the tactical, but the, I would, if there was no tactical experience whatsoever in this, I, I would still be involved in everything um, just because it helps to pull me back um, into the clouds for the, mm -hmm. for the overview um, versus always getting sucked in back down into the grass. And I mean, that's like a daily occurrence. I mean, even as much as the Wednesday calls when uh, you get back on there, it's amazing how your mindset will change um, and your emotional state will change uh, just in seven days in between that. Excellent. Love it. Um, Natty, I'll come to you. Same question to you. Tell us about the last year, what's been going on with the coaching. Yeah, so um, I joined in 2019 just to kind of give some, some numbers. So when I first joined, I was at around $400,000 in gross revenue. And then after the first year, we jumped up to around 650. That's how we finished um, last year. And after the last year, I realized that I want to be a part of, you know, even more collective group of people who think and have done things that I haven't done before. And I have aspiration of doing so. So I started joining CEO. So, um, you know, with Anthony and Marissa's in, in my group uh, in, in CEO, and, you know, we just kind of help each other out, build and support each other when it comes to business and also personal growth and fast forward where we're at right now, we're on track to do around 900,000 this year. So it's been a huge help just being part of the 4% first and then jump into the CEO as well. Um, just to echo what, what, what Anthony and Marissa were saying before, um, most of the time when we're in this kind of event, in this kind of group, especially with the progress group, uh, with, you know, with group N uh, and the CEO group, uh, you know, there's, there's collective group of people that will help you with tactical stuff. But most of the times when we get to spend time with each individual for a longer process, you know, everyone kind of challenged you exactly on how you should be thinking rather than what you should be thinking. To me, that's very important because that's where you're really going to have the, the freedom to make really good choices when it comes to your life and your business. So, you know, I, I really appreciate that from any, everyone in my groups, both groups. Excellent. I love that. Matt, same question to you. Just tell us about the last 12 months um, being, being part of this coaching community. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of echo some of the things the the other, the other guys have been saying, because it, it's the group, especially as we came out of a time when people, not just in the community, but within your business, other employees are very fearful. Uh, it was easy to kind of adopt that mindset. Um, and it's the group that kind of pulled me out of that. So listening to Paul, um, getting on the the regular calls as we, uh, we opened the clinic back up um, and um, to not just sit back. And I think we'll talk about it a little bit more, but to actually start to invest in marketing and to invest in um, some more leadership roles, some management roles in the, the company. So, you know, um, I actually took the mindset of, of growing as we come out of it, where I think if I was on my own and, and the way that it played out when I was on my own previous to joining 4% was kind of, you know, okay, if something bad is happening, just do it, you know, hunker down and you'll get through it. Um, I didn't do that this time. And um, it's a testament to the group that you've kind of pushed me along and uh, got me out of my shell a little bit. Um, and I, I have grown um, from a team of, there was four of us pre COVID and we're up to nine and now, um, so yeah, um, that's been my last 12 months, um, with some ups and downs in there, some, some team members, uh, coming and going, but, um, um, all in all, it's been, it's been growing pretty steady. Um, Excellent. Excellent. Well done, Matt. Um, all right, Derek, um, just obviously we heard a little bit from you when we uh, uh, give you the Business Genius Award, um, but just 
go a little bit more. Describe the growth that you've had in the business in the last 12 months, because obviously the last 12 months has been part of that crazy time that we've been through since, the, you know, it seems like the day after we finished the New Orleans event, the world, you know, fell over. Um, and, and there, let's, what was the, what's the growth that you've had in that last 12 months? Yeah, you know, after the New Orleans uh, event, I mean, we, we shook the earth apparently and, and kind of shifted the direction, I guess. Uh, no, look, I mean, the last 12 months, I think we all we all know what that has looked like. And and I think there was two roads that we could take. You could kind of sit there and, hey, let me go get the money that's being offered and let me just kind of sit here and weather the storm or take that that long term view of what what can I do right now that is going to make this a, a stronger business, a more profitable business, a better functioning business for the long run. Um, really, and, and this isn't an exaggeration in five years, whenever I look at where the business is at, most of the things that will have been put in place happen because of the last 12 months. Um, some because of the time that we had during, during COVID, you know, some of the, the systems that we put in place, uh, you know, and this is, this goes back to me kind of, you know, being in the business too much. I was dragging my feet on because, oh, I didn't have enough time. I have too many patients to see. Um, and that time kind of forced me to realize, like, you know, you're not going to get out of this unless you take that step back and you can have the time to actually spend doing this. So, uh, I mean, the last 12 months, we've we've implemented scorecards. We've done leadership training. We've done content. We've set up, you know, funnels and different infusion soft stuff. But the biggest thing is is really kind of shifting my focus from, you know, look, I was seeing I was seeing patients 45 hours a week and then spending 15 hours a week doing business stuff. And, um, you know, we've grown to the point, I, I mean, we've probably grown, uh, 30%, which was, which is, was fairly significant, um, from where we were at with me stepping back from, uh, patient care about 50%. I'm, I'm probably seeing patients like 25 hours a week or so now. Um, and, and there's a plan in place for, uh, you know, the next three months to, to pull that back even more. So uh, that's really been, you know, part of, of having these conversations with you talking about scorecards. What can we do with this time, having the conversations with the group. So I, when I look at the last 12 months, I'm like, this is going to take us a very long way. The things that we did in the last 12 months. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Anthony, Marissa, same to you guys. Uh, what's the, what, what growth have you guys gone through in the last 12 months? Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the past year, um, our business has continued to grow. Um, we've added staff members. You can say the numbers because. We have a team of eight now and um, um, a couple a couple on and off along the way too, which um, you know was helpful <laughs> being involved in the groups during that process as well. Yeah. I think um, growth is not always linear. So we definitely experienced a lot last year with COVID, obviously with like Anthony said, um, hiring, firing, and just getting better at that process. Um, learning more about the, the people that we want to let, I think into our team and into our world has been really huge. And yeah, um, a bigger focus on core values too with hiring. And yeah. um I mean, we had like another pretty big challenge this year. I don't know if um, you guys remember we presented the last one about my dad having the um, heart attack last year and the open heart surgery. Well, he talked that a couple months ago. He had uh, two uh, brain abscesses and um, he was in the hospital for 50 days. So in Pittsburgh, um, which is quite a distance from us. So he had uh, was in a medically induced coma for a couple of weeks and two brain surgeries. I was out of the clinic for two months. Um, I literally think I stepped foot in the doors uh, two times. And I mean, that's absolutely a testament to what I've learned in this group as far as um, building the business and building a team um, and literally being able to separate myself from that and coming back and <clears throat> not, a, not a beat was skipped. Um, you know, it really taught me a big lesson too. Uh, I mean, at that point in time, like it was so, the business was so not important to me. And, um, you know, I just didn't care. I said, I'm going and that's it. Uh, I'm not going to worry about what's happening. And, you know, luckily um, nothing happened at the business. <laughs> it was uh, successful. It kept running. And, you know, I was able to just come back in like, you know, like nothing. So that was a big testament to what we learned on how to build a, a proper team that actually supports you and enables you to exit your business and be a business owner. Yeah, I think that can't be like stressed enough. And we, I think everybody's a little naive to that early on. and you start out with that mindset of, 
of the grind and work, work, work. And honestly, like hard work is almost a core <laughs> value of ours. So it's really hard to break out of that. But um, we've taught ourselves over the past year to um, redefine what, what um, I guess, productive or like um, the right, right work looks like, kind of like Paul was talking about yesterday. And yeah, high value work. Yeah. And um, I think as a couple, removing one person from the, from the day-to-day -day operations is really hard. And we did that with Anthony, but now I'm more removed from it as well. And so that's been a huge win for us. Just, it's like, we've really got our life back in a lot of ways. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's the biggest thing too, uh, outside of the numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just the personal growth that Paul was talking about. Yeah. How's he, how's he that? He's good. He's actually, he's home now. Um, surprisingly, he's back where you have him with us and doing very, very well. So it was, uh, an unbelievable two months and literally we did not think he was going to make it the first couple of weeks um so we're very blessed to have him home yes couldn't uh, agree more that's uh, great news all right um thanks for sharing that as well by the way um natty uh same for yourself as well i know that you you guys have been through some amazing growth in the last 12 months especially things like location and stuff like that so do you want to share that with the rest of the group yeah so um so since covid uh we have grown from just four staff members to now nine. So we now have nine employees uh, with us. I just hired three last week. And we were subleasing space from a CrossFit gym that was about 500 square foot with two treatments table and just uh, uh, almost like a turf area. And we relocated to have our own brick and mortar space that is about 5,500 square foot uh, with strength conditioning and also acupuncture uh, within the same facility. So it's, it's just been great to be able to have the, the, the place that we can call our own home, our own headquarters, um, in order to just really fulfill the vision that I, I have had for, for my clinic. Um, and with that being said, it's just um, be able to give people opportunity to, um, to be part of my company and to, um, to fulfill their own, um, I guess, uh, purpose when it comes to having meaningful uh, work and meaningful life. So I, I you know, totally appreciate that and very grateful to be able to, to be in that position to just give jobs to people. Um, and, you know, just, just hearing with what Anthony and Marissa is going through, you know, um, I can totally relate just because my dad passed away three years ago and that was a huge shift in um, just getting myself prioritizing my family health and part of being part of this group is, is a huge thing because the goal is not to be stuck working 40 hours a week, but rather to just build and create something that can run without you. And the whole point of doing it is to have a team of people that you can trust, that you can train, but also be okay with letting people go as well. And having people in CEO and being in 4% in club and seeing how they're handled changing in personnel uh, give me a sense of confidence that I'm, I'm going to be able to do, do uh, what I'm setting out to do for my own life purpose as well. Excellent. Um, all right, Matt, we'll come back to you. You, you said you thing went from four to nine as well. You're amazing, you know, doubling the, the workforce as well. But um, just tell us a little bit more about that. What was the, what was the sort of the path through that last 12 months? Uh, the, the first big change for me was coming out of, um, you know, the, the res really restrictive phase of uh, COVID lockdowns and all that. Um, I knew that I didn't want to be in the treatment room all the time. And the first thing that I needed, or I, I kind of decided that I needed was someone in operations. So I hired an ops manager. It actually was um, my first ever hire, my front desk who had left. And I asked if she wanted to come back and work uh, she's doing uh, about 25 hours a week with me and she took over all major operations. We worked together for a long time to um, kind of build up um, a lot of the systems, the behind the scenes, the scorecards um, um, and the follow-up process. That was the other big thing that has been a major shift for us. Uh, change in focus is um, regular, consistent, ongoing follow up with our past patients and with any new leads. So that's one that we've uh, really worked hard on. So that led to uh, uh, 
uh, as we added the ops manager position, uh, invested in our marketing a bit more, we started to get more leads following up with those led to more patients coming in. So I hired my another PT um, and then I hired a part-time PT. Um, so um, we have two full-time plus myself, I'm still seeing quite a schedule and then um, a part-time PT. Uh, full massage schedule. And who else do I have? Oh, my, um, I ended up hiring, hiring a marketing assistant um, who after going through this weekend, again, I just needed to be constantly bashed into my brain a little bit is uh, I, I think I need to bring them in full time too. But um, yeah, that's, that's where we're at with the team now. Plus a uh, part-time front, another part-time front desk staff. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. All right, Derek, I'm going to come to you. Um, uh, so um, throughout uh, the last sort of 12 months, I'm sure there's been certain strategies that you've taken on board and that you've implemented, but what's what's one of the ones that, that you want to share with the rest of the group? I, 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 the biggest thing I would say is if you're not getting strategic about scorecards, then you're missing an opportunity to have some very uh, high-level conversations with your staff and we, we've kind of evolved our scorecard. You know, we kind of took the basics and, and started with something, you know, just started having those conversations. And then as we were doing it, we realized that, that the conversations would go through kind of the, hey, okay, let's check the boxes. And then we would get to this, you know, back 10 minutes of our scorecard conversation. And, you know, that was where a lot of the value came from in those. And so we've started to kind of change that to, to really say like, what is that position? Like, what are the measurables that, uh, that relate to the actions of that position? And so as you're doing it, it's a living, it's a living process. You're always trying to improve those conversations. So that's been big. I, I think for, for my sanity, for one, to know that, you know, me not being, you know, the, the puppet master and moving all of the strings, uh, because I'm going to have this, this conversation, we do them every other week. Uh, with just about everybody except for my, my ops manager. That's a, a quick weekly conversation. But, um, you know, it, it just makes me feel much better about stepping back and stepping out because you, you know all the you know all the metrics, you know where all the issues are, are lying, you know where everything, you know, is, is going, where your hiccups are, you know, you're getting the feedback. So that's been a big one, um, you know, leadership training and actually being intentional about leadership training has been a big thing. I, when, let's see, 18 months ago, we were probably at, let's say 16 to 18 staff members or so. Um, we've kind of hovered around 22 to 23 right now. But uh, even though we've added, you know, probably three staff members, so we really haven't grown the staff all that much, you know, our, our revenue's up like 40 plus percent. So that, I, that, that I'm proud of. And that's a testament to, you know, really training the staff and making sure that we're having those conversations. So you're getting more out of the staff that you have. And it's not this constant, oh, we need more people, need more people, need more people. Uh, you know, we really, we really didn't. And, and really, other than needing a PT right now, I think we've got another like 20% that we can grow a lot of this stuff just with the current staff without, without even needing to add stuff. And really the only reason we're trying to do a PT is so that I can stop seeing patients. <laughs> All so right, excellent. that um, cockpit, you know, I could go down the list. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I totally agree. Um, Anthony Marista as well, yourself, what's the, what's the one strategy that you want to share uh, with the group that you've implemented in the last 12 months? Um, well, we we changed our perspective on location a little bit after our last CEO meeting where um, we talked with Paul and our group about instead of doing like one massive central location, like having a lot of small satellite offices. Um, so we are in the process of moving our office. Um, we're adding another office currently um, in the same town that we're in. Um, it's about double the size of what we have now, but then with the mindset for growing further out, um, you know, smaller satellite clinics coming out within that uh, 10 to 12 mile radius um, to be able to touch other places and have a presence. And I feel like it really fits our um, specific business model because we run very lean. Um, you know, we've always had very low expenses and we've been able to really have a high profit margin out of uh, where we're at, you know, based upon creating like just very low expense clinic. And it just makes sense for us to be able to create that, um, you know, in other places too. 
um, along with the lines of, you know, hopefully buying the real estate when we're doing that and, uh, you know, getting, um, you know, various real estate properties and that. Um, what do you think about implementation? Oh, the next question? No, for, um, you know, Oh, implemented. Well, um, I mean, I think just starting that process, it'll be the first, this will be the first second location, I guess, that we're adding. So just getting the experience of what that's like to go through, um, so that we can replicate that, making sure that, you know, our systems and everything are in place, but actually feels like a way better fit, like you were saying for us. And I think it's just something like we weren't seeing, you know, and Paul pointed that out to us, like we were so focused on this one big location with all these different services that we were missing like this other opportunity entirely. And I think that's the real value is just like challenging your thinking and to look at things differently. And it made it so that we could actually make this move a lot sooner, you know, instead of like this five-year plan that we were kind of looking at. So um, I don't know if that's the implementation, but, but, uh, but yeah, I think that's been our biggest strategy because it's basically changed the trajectory of our business entirely, but I feel way more confident with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. No, totally agree. Natty, over to you on that one as well. Same question. Um, What's the strategy that you implemented in the last 12 months that, uh, that you want to share? So the biggest thing for me was um, hiring a marketing assistant because I, we were able to get out marketing, especially email and everything else to be on a consistent basis. Um, and, you know, I got this from the last mastermind that we had and, you know, I immediately implemented that, got an intern. And then after the internship was over, hire her for 30 hours a week. And now I don't have to write a single email for the week and not everything is being dropped off. And now what we're seeing is that during this time towards, you know, summer, at the end of the summer, we tend to have a little drop off compared to last year, but we actually have probably a 20% increase compared to last year because we haven't stopped doing the marketing. Cause usually if we're busy, that means I'm treating and that means I'm not doing all the marketing that's need to be done. So by implementing that, hiring someone uh, to do the job that obviously at the lower price point, but also yield a, a high return, that, that was the biggest takeaway for me so far. Excellent. Um, Matt, same to you as well. What's the one thing that you, that you implemented um, that you want to share? Um, really right now I'm, I'm, my strategy is to focus on retention, patient retention. I feel like in the past I've, I haven't done a great job uh, as far as the customer lifetime value. We haven't really followed up. So a lot of our conversations right now, it, we just keep going back to um, what can we do to make sure that we are reaching out in, you know, six months, a year to those past patients. We have a specific time allotted to following up with people that we typically see come back in, but we're just making sure that they don't fall off um, the radar now. And that's something that we didn't do before. And we're already starting to see some returns on that. So we want to nail that first and make, I want to make sure that my staff are doing that when I'm not there, especially as my ops manager has taken more and more control um, of that over time, making sure that that gets done. So we're again, uh, like Derek was saying, we're, we're really using our our scorecard to facilitate those conversations and our scorecard has changed over time. And obviously they're different for the different roles, but especially for our, our follow-up team, um, you know, we're starting to have those conversations more based on what the scorecard is saying and making sure that we stay on top of it because it tends to slide if we, if we um, aren't talking about it regularly, like anything. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love that. Um, all right. Okay. So, um, uh, you touched on it before, Matt. I'm going to stay with you on, on this one um, uh, as well. And the, you, you, one of the hires that you made recently was a marketing assistant as well, a part of you, the growing team. So talk about the marketing strategy that you've really seen, um, uh, the, the benefit of having the marketing assistant and the strategies and things that they've implemented and the things that you've seen success with. Um, I think I've talked about it before, at least with you, Simon. Um, and Paul mentioned it too, is uh, if you're not, if you're, if you're, if you're not doing it regularly, if you're putting it off or just not doing it at all, you need to make sure that you have somebody that is taking care of that role. And um, obviously the marketing is very important. So it was a big hire for me. 
um, even just for the mind space to make sure that um, I know something is getting done um, as far as social media, um, organizing content. Um, so I have somebody there that is doing that now regularly. Um, that's been that's been huge for me. It's something I'm, we don't have it all right yet. Uh, there's still a lot of room to improve and grow, um, especially we need somebody that is doing that more regularly for us um, to really fill out the whole, um, you know, the different spokes of the, of the marketing plan. Um, but that's something that we're working towards. So even just having someone in that position um, as a marketing assistant or a full-time uh, marketing person has made a big difference. Excellent. Um, Natty, same question to you. What's the marketing, the marketing strategy or the marketing, what do you want to call it, a tactic or uh, something that has been uh, implemented that, you've, uh, that you've, you've done over the last 12 months and saw some success from it? Um, so uh, two things, uh, the consistency of email marketing, uh, just stay con uh, in, in contact with you know, your current patient or your past patient um, and really just keep fostering that deeper relationship. Um, so that's, that's been huge. And then, you know, creating a promotion and then let them know what's going on in the clinic. That's a big one. Second thing is uh, having that um, referral envelope that also from the last mastermind where you just give it to your new uh, patient and say, hey, listen, you, you, you've been having a great experience with us so far. You know, we have this offer where, you know, if you give this to someone, they book an appointment, they get an appointment and you also get an appointment on us. Uh, it just really increase, uh, make, make the fact that uh, we're asking for referral a lot easier because we're not really asking, we're just giving value. So that's just been a huge mindset shift for everyone in the front and also the PT as well. And it makes the patient very comfortable in referring us to their friends and family. I love it. Derek, same question to you. What's, uh, what's that marketing strategy uh, that's uh, really born through for your clinic? This, this will seem a little bit ridiculous and, and a lot of y'all may be doing it already, but um, my front office came to me and said that um, they wanted to change our intake questionnaire to ask what services uh, the patients would be interested in. And we, we worded that as like, what other health issues have you dealt with? And we basically listed all of our programs as answers to that question. So inflammation, mobility, weight loss, um, uh, athletic recovery, like we just went down the list and, and listed that. And based on their answers, they go back and, and put together a, a a, a pre-written email that says, hey, after your eval, we talked about it as a team. We think this would be the best program for you. And that gets emailed out to them. Now, we've, we've done a bunch of fancy stuff trying to get Infusionsoft to do this, but you don't even really need to do that. So they've told us what they want on the front end, like what extra service do they want? And then we just give it to them. We make the offer um, after they've told us that. So they're already here for care. Hey, hope you're getting the best out of your PT services. I hope you're healing. I hope your pain's better. You also told us you were interested in weight loss. Check out this video. Here's our weight loss program. It's, it's like, it seems so simple, but um, implementing that one thing, I, I would, I bet you that brings us in uh, probably 25 grand a month. Um, that, that's, that's not exaggerating. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's, all of our all of our advanced sales, the people who spend a thousand dollars a month with us outside of their PT stuff, always come from that. So um, sometimes it's the simple things, right? Yeah, no, I love that. I absolutely love it because again, when we, the, the I think the default um, mind is uh, or the default thought is I market to find new people. What you're doing is we found you. We're going to keep marketing to you, and we're going to market to you in a very successful way. I think um, I, I, I think it was at the last event we heard uh, something. Or there was there was definitely something that, that, that came out on one of the calls that said, um, you know, marketing is giving somebody the opportunity to spend more money with you, and you've got somebody that's coming in to spend money, and now I want to identify how I can get you to spend more money, and I want to up my customer lifetime value as part of that as well. So I love that. I think that's fabulous. Um, Anthony, Marissa, same one for you. What's uh, what's going well for you in terms of marketing? We've been um, having a, a big uh, emphasis on omnipresence, and that's really changed like our educated leads coming in. So, I mean, we've just done a really good job of being like average to good at a lot of things versus like spectacular at one thing. 
So we've been doing like golden tickets, um, Facebook ads. We put a big emphasis on getting Google reviews. I think we're at like 53 five-star reviews. Updating the blog, we're doing infusion soft emails, um, strong word of mouth. Some uh, doctors are hearing about us from patients. We've been running newspaper ads, um, church bulletin ads. So all different types of things where um, people that are coming into the clinic now are saying, hey, like my friend recommended me that I had another friend give me a golden ticket. And then I saw you online on my Facebook. And then I happened to go to church and you were in the bulletin. And then I went to my doctor and asked about you. And they said, oh, you've heard about that place. We're really good. You know, so it's been, um, that's been the biggest shift, I think the last year versus when we first started, where it was a lot of word of mouth. Now people are like seeing us at a bunch of different angles and they're getting a lot of social proof from that too. Um, you know, with the reviews and, uh, you know, the different types of ad type that we're doing. I've, I've noticed too, some people have come in and, and mentioned the ads and been like, I read that and I felt like you were exactly speaking to me. Um, so really just like a, a, a mixed bag of everything to um, increase awareness for us and kind of create a little bit of that celebrity status in the community. Excellent. I love it. Um, uh, again, we talk about things like repurposing. Take one, take one marketing um, message. How do I repurpose it across various different media and various different ways? You can take one thing and turn it into 10, 15, 20 different things. All right, uh, guys, I'm going to stay with you for this, the, uh, for this question as well. Um, th this is the last question. We're going to open it up to the floor, to the guys in the room and everyone else around the world <coughs> who's on the call at the moment. So uh, uh, it's almost like an elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to somebody thinking about joining a coaching program in terms of your experience? I would say if you're um, if you're committed to growing your business, um, keyword committed to, uh, you're going to get way more value than what you're going to pay for the services and the programs. Um, you know, it's just like PT. You don't expect to come in and pay your money and sit back and not do anything and get something out of that. But honestly, like, I, I feel we get so much value for our price just from even a couple of small things, a couple of small pieces of information think Paul's been talking a lot about this, but everyone's looking for the next new thing, the next big thing. All you really need is like one or two small things that like light up a light bulb for you and get you to the next level. And it's literally like an extra hundred to $200,000 into your business. Um, I mean, I think that's, that's huge. And as I mentioned before, just the emotional and mindset state um, that it's able to keep you in and, and help you to like be a much more relaxed person, less anxiety. Um, I'm not really worried about things um, in the business at all. I have a much more um, stoic viewpoint on things and making decisions. And I've learned to make decisions faster and live with the consequences and not, you know, be worried one way or the other, you know, because like Paul says, we always, we always make it out the other end, no matter what happens. Yeah. I would just add that off of that, like you really can't grow your business without growing yourself. And um, you can try on your own, but um, I think we all would like to think that we're where we want to be, but the truth is just that it's a constant like evolution and growth process. And um, I think when you look back on your past couple years for us, um, I feel like we're really, truly different people for the better. And we couldn't have done that without um, exposure to all the things that we get from the group. And also Paul just holding us accountable and challenging us to go there. Um, but you have to be willing to do that. Like Anthony said, and kind of, get beyond yourself uh and to me that's the thing that is the absolute like most valuable part of the group excellent um now what would you have to say to somebody who asked you that um so you know what the first thing i would say is that uh is it's not for everybody because it's required a lot of hard work to to be successful and you know part of being a group like this is that you, you we keep each other accountable Right. And not a lot of people want to be kept accountable. Most people quit their job to start their own business because they don't want to answer to people. But at the end of the day, you have to answer to someone, probably yourself and, you know, your staff at some point. Um, so for those who want to do the deep work, uh, really dive down uh, of how your business reflect you and, you know, really get into a good point in your life where you can be comfortable with yourself uh, and being comfortable with running the business the way you want to run it, I think it's, it's the right move for you. Um, if you're looking for just tactical strategies, it's going to work for you at some point, but at some point it's going to kind of die down because like, you know, like Anthony and everyone else here, it's like, it's all about the simple things, right? And then Paul mentioned this at the CEO, it's like, if it's good enough to do once, it's good enough to do it all the time. And once fancy answers of, hey, 
you need to do this and this or the next thing or this and that, but it's just do the same thing over and over again, you know, and, and it's, it's boring, right? But that's, that's the beauty of it. If you want just a very good stability, you know, good um, culture where people are doing the same thing, but they just do better and better. Like the emails can always be better. You know, your time blocking can always be better, right? If, if you're that kind of person, it is it's an absolutely a must join for you guys. Uh, but if you're not, then that's cool. You know, I'm sure you learn a lot from, from just this event alone. But if you're committed to learning about yourself and your business, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, you have to do it. It's right. It's right what you say. We are, you know, we say it. We are the permanent reminder service. That's what we're here to do. I keep telling you them things that you've probably forgotten about or while you're off on your, well, what's next? What's next, Simon? I did this thing that you told me to do. Tell me what to do next. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. And, and to, if we can get you to help me master the basics as well, then we know that we're doing our job right. Uh, Matt, let's uh, let's come to you. What's the, what's the, uh, what would your answer be? Uh, should anybody ask you that question about what it's like to be part of a coaching program? Yeah, I wrote down three things and uh, it's going to sound like I'm just uh, echoing Natty here. But uh, the first one I wrote down, because we've been talking about it a bit this weekend, is having that second voice in the conversation. I'm a, I'm a sole business owner. Um, I'm the same way. I don't want to take every problem home to, uh, my family and trying to talk about it with staff is, uh, doesn't always lead to the, you know, the best conversations. So, um, you guys have been that sounding board for me, um, when it comes to trying to figure out a, a direction to go or dealing with difficult, uh, issues or even, uh, just bragging about the good stuff too. So, um, uh, the second thing I wrote down uh, again is accountability. Um, what used to be our accountability groups, uh, also known as our progress groups now, um, have been huge. And um, that's kind of been the grounding force for me is coming to those, um, even if I've skipped a couple. Um, I always come back to that as, uh, um, you know, when I, when I need help, I know that they're there and uh, 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 Cam, shout out to Cam because he's been our our um, group leader for a while and um, he's always there to to help um, help us along and the last thing I wrote down uh, just like Natty was saying it's growth uh, for me um, I came for the I came for the professional but it's kind of ended up being a lot of personal growth too and um, a lot of that is just through um, watching all you guys and listen to all you guys um, but I'm also starting to see it, um, in my own business and, um, yeah, forget the, the money and the staff or whatever that comes along with, with doing all that. Um, it, it's just exciting to, to feel that, that growth. And I, I know that I wouldn't have done it without this, this group. So. Excellent. Well That's done. why you should join. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right look um uh, we're going to wrap this up and we're going to open it up for q a but we'll 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 uh end where we started um with derek derek um what's your elevator pitch for being part of a coaching program what's it meant to you uh good question i would say uh don't even worry about it um if, if you're listening to this paul's already got it he'll just keep marketing and selling what you need until you until you take the take the the, the bait and then and then he'll tell you what he did to get you to take it so you can repeat that for your customer. So, so don't even worry about it. It's all taken care of already. Um, no, no, in all seriousness, uh, I know very few very successful businesses that got where the business owner truly wanted them to be without having you know, these outside conversations with great you know, mentors, coaches, uh, you know, colleagues, uh, it's really tough sometimes for us to see it from, from our vantage point. So uh, every majorly successful business that, that I've ever, business owner that I've ever talked to, it has done some version of great coaching or found a great mentor. And, you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, and uh, what everybody else said is, is 100% right. Your business will reflect your growth uh, personally. So um, for all those reasons, stick around. Fantastic. Love it. Absolutely love it. And uh, couldn't agree more uh, as well. And, and, and you're at all for you. Absolutely right. Look, guys, um, let's throw it open. Um, let's get some questions. I think let's take advantage of the fact that you've got four very successful, um, very open and honest 4% um, club and CEO members at your disposal to answer some questions. 
Um, so who wants to jump in? Whether you're in the if you're in the room or are you uh, online, who wants to go first? Is that Aaron? Aaron is up. Hey Aaron. Not this tall. Yeah. So um, uh, our company, we've just finally got into the uh, the who and um, and the not the how. Now we've uh, recently hired a uh, ops manager, and we have a marketing assistant starting tomorrow. So um, in terms of like our operations manager, what does you feel like uh, we really need to concentrate on specifically um, like training and coaching for them to make sure that they are in the, um, the right mindset for us to help us with solving the problems as well as the, uh, as the marketing uh, assistant? Great okay. question. One thing that I would I would say a lot is uh, one of the things that Paul talks about is like the DNA download, I think is what he calls it, is, is really just spending a lot of time talking with them about what you see, you know, needs in the business, what do they see needs, and really just kind of trying to, to share your vision of what the business is. Uh, those kind of, you know, simple DNA conversations can go really, really far and, and and almost answer some of the questions for you. you know, like they'll end up answering those questions for you. Yeah. Anyone else want to tag that on, Natty? Yeah, to follow up with what Derek is saying, um, is you know, create that commercial awareness so that the employee that you're employing kind of knows the ins and outs of the business. Um, you know, I, I just hired my first ops manager just starting in two weeks, but uh, with my marketing assistant, it was the same thing where we spend a lot of time together. Uh, I have a watch accelerator and we'll go over like, Hey, you know, here's where this message is coming from. What are your thoughts on this? Here's why I'm doing this and that, you know, and every time she write an email, she'll send it to me. I'll proofread it and say, Hey, why don't we do it this way instead? And here's why I think we should do it this way. And then do you see what I'm, where I'm coming from with that? It's just, you know, um, it's kind of like dating in a way, um, you know, you just kind of fill each other out. <laughs> See, you have the same value, same same language, right? And that's that's all it is. Excellent, uh, Anthony. I was going to say I agree with both the guys. I think um, really getting them indoctrinated into your culture is very important early on, letting them know who you are. Um, that's going to help to bring them along further. And also, I think um, setting realistic expectations to. Um, is very helpful for your emotional state in the process of bringing on somebody new and being realistic in what's expected out of them and, you know, really taking your time, um, you know, in that process to nurture them, to set them up for success in the business is important. I think it's easy to underestimate really everything that you've like learned and um, like just I don't know, like everything that you really know, you, yeah, you, feel like it's like <laughs> you know, and what you've learned lot. in this group. And I don't know, anytime we brought on new staff, like you said, just tapering the expectation, this is really going to take a long time for them to understand, you know, for most people in this group, it's a more unique business model than just like, you know, just another PT clinic. So just really like giving that time um, for them to just start to understand everything was, is huge too. Mm -hmm. So Matt? Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, and just to kind of echo on the, like making sure they know like who your perfect patient is, who who you're really trying to target. And we spend a lot of time on uh, talking about our core values and really try to impress those on any new staff that are coming in, especially if they're going to be leading a team in an operations um, position. I think, uh, Simon, let me jump, jump in if you Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great it's a great question and it's a big one for a lot of people when you get to the point of the ops person i think um what you've got to do is give them time to uh, certainly mistakes i've made is where an ops manager comes in and the temptation is to get them to want to do things straight away and it's too quick to tactical rather than um derek as i use the phrase the dna download is just really the relationship and the equity and the comfortableness between each other and the uh, ability for you to talk and just communicate, actually that'll set the relationship up to last significantly longer and be more likely to be successful than just coming in on a Monday morning and there's your this, there's your this, there's the other, there's the other. All of that, all of that's pretty important, but it's, um, 
I mean, it's very important, but that's tactical. The minute you get to the 9.30, we're going to do this. 10 o'clock, we're going to do this. That's tactical. And I think for this ops manager's role, you're probably trying to go above that. You're trying to go one step higher than just the tactical. They'll figure all that out for themselves if they're any good. What will determine the success of their relationship? I'm getting quite a bit of feedback here. The, the, the determine, what will determine the success of the, uh, the tenure, the role, uh, in my experience, will be that first two or three weeks and the relationship they have with you and whether or not you allow for them to ease into their role and find their way into cockpit and find their way into recruitment. If they're any good, they'll tell you after a few weeks what's wrong with recruitment. They'll tell you what's wrong with finance. They'll tell you where the processes are wrong. That's the point of managing that type of person, is you're not telling them what to do. They're actually coming to you to tell you what to do, assuming, and this is the kick, the, the, the kicker, if they've done recruitment before, if they've done finance before, if they've done systems and processes before, that's where it nearly always goes wrong. That if I've hired you to do these three to five things, I don't really need to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you direction, but that first two or three weeks is real high level, top line stuff. This is the finance stuff. This is the ops stuff. Lord, I, I honestly start, I mean, Vito is probably a good one for you to speak to. We've done really some version of this. We've done really, really well to get here. This is why you're here. However, it's totally a fucking mess, right? Come in and fix it. But we can't neglect the fact that what we've done to get here is amazing. We've got here somehow at this point, despite all of these things that don't talk to each other and this thing that's a mess and this thing that's over here and this thing that's over there, your job is really to come in and make them more efficient be respectful of the fact that people have brought us to this point, how we've got here. We can't be critical. We can't be this. We can't be the other. We've got to respect all of that. But at the same time, we have to find a way to evolve from the company that we are today and the size of the company that we are today to the one that we want to be. And that's really what an ops manager is doing. They're coming in at half a million, 650, 750, whatever it will be. And it's probably time for them because it's a mess. Do you get it? Like they've been hired because it's getting out of your, your control. In which case you've probably already lost control, in which case it is a mess. Their job is to come in and fix it. If you knew what the, so let's let check this out. If you knew what the problem was, it wouldn't be a fucking mess, right? So how can you tell them what to do? You can't, because you don't know. Otherwise you'd have done it. That's the point of hiring them. The point of hiring was them to go, I'm, I'm bringing in outside savviness to a situation to solve the things that I don't know how to do. Because we keep lugging these things on. We keep kind of think this is, sounds like a good process, but I'm much more in favor of hiring somebody who learned on somebody else's dime, you get it? How it actually works, rather than me on my dime, assuming how it might work. And that's what the mindset is when you bring in the ops person. They're there because there's probably a mess in the business. If they're any good, they'll figure out how to solve that mess. And it's almost going to be like a, hey, look, there's a mess over here. Let me introduce you to this mess over here as well. And hey, look, finance is a mess. Good luck. And hey, marketing's a mess. Good luck with that one. This recruitment stuff, this is an absolute mess. Good luck. That's kind of the point. To get to the next step, you're bringing them in from outside with some knowledge on what these things are supposed to look like alongside of you and the guidance and the uh, direction against the outcome that you want but really it's crack on and most importantly it's just get like have that conversation relax emotional equity is there a relationship going to be built here can we actually get on don't forget this person someone going to have, you're going to have to trust them can you get on with them do you like them do you like hanging around with them i think it's relatively important at that level because they're going to be a big player for you so i think that that's my biggest get strategic before you get tactical in that conversation Back to you, Simon. Thanks, Paul. Um, all right. Uh, okay, who wants to go next? Let's go to, uh, let's have a look. Let's go to uh, David. David Stedgen up in New York. David, what did you take from that? A lot of things. Um, you know, just to get clear on what you're going to concentrate on, um, you know, whether it's concentrate on implementing scorecards and how everything leads to everything else. Um, yeah, a lot. 
It, it's it, look, it, it, it's hugely true. The scorecard thing is going to be one of the biggest things that, and the biggest um, uh, shift in your business when you start to implement them. I've seen it with, with a lot of the guys inside of four percent and what they've done, and it's it's been a revelation. Um, all right, I'm going to go to someone I went to yesterday as well. Someone who's with us for the first time, Kira. Kira, what have you wrote down? What did you take from listening to them guys um, sharing their? Uh, I was going to say secrets. It's not really their secrets. Um, the things that have happened inside of their business. Hi, John. Um, yeah. What uh, What did you take from it? Okay. Our biggest thing right now is leadership training, and I wrote down intentional leadership training that we've got an operations manager who is doing fabulous, which has unloaded John quite a bit because he's the business manager, HR, marketing, all of that. I'm the clinician and I specialize in pelvic rehab, but my ortho clinician is probably not the strongest to be my team leader and my future clinic director, but I'm willing to invest in her and try and get more of that leadership training. So I think that's really where we need to spend some time is staff training, the sales process, the leadership training, refine our scorecards. And um, that's the next step is really kind of our clinical team. Our admin team's doing fabulous, but we're falling short with our clinical team. Excellent. I would just add on to that. Um, we were kind of in a similar position, I think with clinical staff, maybe like a year or so ago. And Paul like always preaches it, but the best way I think to, to kind of push people into that is just to remove yourself yeah. <laughs> and like, they will either sink or swim. And if you have the right people to swim and like he just mentioned about being out a lot the past, over the past year. And like, honestly, all of our therapists are like, we are way more competent than we realized we were, we were, but you're, you're a crutch when you're there and it's easy to just jump in. So like, I think just even just getting out of the way and um, just kind of removing yourself is one really good way to, to do that too. Yeah. And train people in making decisions too. Um, you know, start on small scale, but get them in the habit of making a decision without asking you on smaller things, you know, and that'll help to build up confidence and encourage more like leadership roles. Um, I think another thing too important is like working together as a team, which we preach a lot, which we made some changes in clinic for that. Um, you know, that has been helpful because we have uh, an assistant that's a little bit more tenured and uh, a newer grad. She's coming on her two years uh, as a PT. So um, that enabled them to be able to work a little bit better as a team, um, you know, with not feeling as much as like the, the younger one having to, you know, feel in a leadership role over someone with that much more experience that was older. Yeah. And I think like just creating an environment where people feel like it's safe to make mistakes. Yep. Is, has been a huge thing for me to learn. Um, and yeah, most people just don't want to be wrong, you know, or they yeah. don't want to look dumb. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Well, well um, brilliant. brilliant. Look, guys, thank you very much. Um, uh, Kira, John, thanks for, uh, for that as well. Um, look, uh, again, big round of applause for our success panel, for Derek, to Natty, to Matt, to Anthony. Thank you for coming on, uh, getting up off your sick bed, Anthony, and to Marissa as well. Um, brilliant, and thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. Thanks for watching this video, and if you found it helpful, and if you now find yourself thinking, I wonder what else this person can help me with, head over to paulgoff.com forward slash books, where you can find my best-selling books, which will show you how to add more profit to your practice. Or send an email to paul at paulgoff.com to ask about how we can help you accelerate the growth and profitability of your clinic. And by the way, if you know anybody who would find this helpful, please share this video out. Thanks so much.